Honorable Minister for Information, Deputy Ministers here present, Chief Directors, the media, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be here this morning to brief you on the current status of implementation of programs and projects being pursued by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources within the National Medium Term Development Policy Framework 2018 to 2021 and other national and international strategic plans such as the Sector Medium Term Plans 2018 to 2021 the Sustainable Development Goals 2015 to 2030, the African Union Agenda 2063, and the Ghana Beyond Aid Charter and Strategy Document. This is in line with the present President's Coordinated Program of Economic and Social Development Policies 2017 to 2024, an agenda for jobs creating prosperity and equal opportunity for all. These programs and projects are geared towards attaining sustainable economic growth with the focus of creating employment and ensuring environmental sustainability as well as a favorable investment climate. I am here with my two deputies, Honorable Benito Usubio and Honorable Nana Eyia, also present are the chief executives of the Forestry, Minerals, and Land Commissions, the administrator of two lands, the acting director general of Ghana Geological Survey Authority, the chief executive of the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, the Managing Director of the Precious Minerals Marketing Company, members of the various boards, the directors of the ministry and agencies. In terms of answering of questions, all these officers will partake. The minister's job is to read. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my presentation will cover key programs and projects being undertaken by the ministry to address the many challenges confronting the sector. With your kind permission, I wish to commence my presentation by touching on the land subsector. Under this, we have improving land administration. The government's overall goal for land that would provide the foundation for socio-economic development. This entails providing efficient access by government, MDAs, MMDAs, investors, and individuals who land for agriculture, industrial, commercial, civic, and residential development for investment in the land subsector. Efficient access, ladies and gentlemen, to land is to the success of government flagship projects, sustainable development goals 1, 2, 5, 11, and 15, and the construction sector of our national economy. Relevant flagship projects that land is critical to include the following. Revitalizing economy. Investors attracted to the Savannah, Middle Belt, and Coastal Development Authorities will require land for their investments. Identification, creation, and acquisition of lands for industrial parks and industrial activities are crucial to national industrialization policy. Two. Revamp economic and social infrastructure. Land acquisition, statutory way leaves and compensation settlements are critical activities under the railway network 
ex expansion to the northern, region, northern Ghana and also the Tema Akosobo rail link. Three, transformation, transform agriculture and industry. Identification of suitable lands and efficient access to unencumbered land are critical for one, planting for food and jobs beneficiaries. Two, one village, one dam for all year round farming. Three, one district, one factory. Please, planting for food and jobs, one village, one dam, one district, one factory are all in parentheses. For warehousing projects, guidelines for large scale land transactions. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lands Commission, in line with government goal to ensure an effective and efficient land for socio economic development, has developed guidelines for large scale and large scale land transactions in Ghana. The guidelines are aimed at assisting customary landowners and resource users, investors, and other decision makers to better appreciate the due process one must follow to acquire land on a large scale for investment purposes. Large scale in this regard is prima facie 50 acres and above, but with exception, exceptions depending on human rights and environment concerns triggered by the acquisition, the guidelines may apply. The objectives of the guidelines are two. One, minimize speculative, speculative acquisitions and any practices that would undermine state policy on land development. Two, protect the interests of local communities by avoiding a situation where investors or individuals who acquire large tracts of land usurp the rights of the large population and in the process subvert the intent of Article 368 of the Constitution of Ghana. Three, safeguard the interests of genuine investors by ensuring that their acquisition lead to secured rights in the atmosphere of mutual trust as to promote, so as to promote the principles in international law relating to foreign direct investment, FDI. Four, promote better land use and ensure that all acquisitions are made for uses that would conform to the land use plan of the areas involved. Five, promote government development policy objectives by facilitating initiatives that will foster job creation, income generation, and equity in resource distribution in line with Ghana's development agenda. Six, ensure that large scale and large, la large scale land transactions in the country conform to suitable development goals and international best practices. Urban renewable projects. Ladies and gentlemen, the ministry in consultation with other stakeholders in consolidating the facilitation of government's vision to put the national capital city on a competitive pedestal comparable to emerging major cities in the world. In line with this, the ministry has facilitated the surveying and acquisition of appropriate legal interests in various land areas earmarked for these transformational projects. These include Marine Drive Tourism Project, Energy City Project, which we call Airport Phase Two, Greater Accra Site for Industrial Enclave and Urban Renewal Project, the National Cathedral Project, which is just behind you, redevelopment of Kumasi Sector 18, redevelopment of Sekendi Takradi Beach Road, and other urban development. 
including my town, Sunyani. The ministry with the involvement of the Lands Commission is also facilitating the following. One, Ghana Togo Boundary Commission. Two, verification and validation of the boundaries of the six newly created regions for final boundary survey works. Three, satellite city development projects and other national initiatives. Geospatial policy. The geospatial policy to guide survey and mapping activities in the country has been submitted to cabinet for consideration and approval. Turn around time. Ladies and gentlemen, Ghana has two land registration systems, namely the deeds registration system and title registration system. The latter is the registration system in the greater Accra region and parts of Kumasi. Government's overall objective is to deliver land title certificate within 30 working days and this registration within 14 working days. It will interest you to note on this registration, which is mostly done across the country, apart from the greater Accra region and parts of Kumasi, the average turnaround time for this registration is currently within the targeted 14 days, within the targeted 14 days. Title registration within 30 days in Accra remains a challenge to the Lands Commission. To this end, government is exploring the best strategies and appropriate partnership, partnerships to implement the key activities aimed at reducing the time taken to register land transactions to meet the government's and feasibility study has been undertaken to establish areas of participation of the private sector within the laws of the country. Possible areas of private sector participation being considered include digitization, digitizing and automating land registration process to improve the speed and accuracy of land registration for both deeds and title. Two, preparing up-to-date, accurate maps through the development of digital autophoto and topographical maps and other spatial data. This is aimed at increasing the speed, accuracy, and reduction in the cost of land registration in the country. Stu land revenue mobilization and disbursement. A number of activities were undertaken, ladies and gentlemen, geared towards improving stool land revenue mobilization and disbursement to stated beneficiaries, including metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies, MMDAs, stools, traditional authorities. These revenue sources include mineral royalties, timber royalties, ground rent, farm rent, and mining concession rent. In the year 2018, the office mobilized a total amount of nearly 58 million Ghana cities. As of June 2019, a total amount of 50 million, representing over 40% of revenue targeted of 110 million Ghana cities, was mobilized and disbursed. This shows a marked improvement over that of previous year. We have almost attained what we had last year. Monitoring of projects by MMDAs undertaken with stool land revenue. The ministry through the Office of Administrator of Stool Lands monitored projects undertaken by MMDAs with their portion of stool lands revenue they received. This is to ensure that MMDAs 
prudently utilize such revenue. Some of the projects include residential accommodation for health workers, community center, and surgical ward at Bupe, district hospital at Asutifi North, and construction of schools in Damongo, Abidjan, one way will ask whether Abidjan is in Ghana or it is in Cote d'Ivoire. And I also want to mention a few. Improving customer land administration. Establishment of customer land secretariat in order to improve efficiency in customer land administration, three customer land secretariats were established to bring the total customary lands secretariat established across the country to 94. These are at Anya, Chabokwe, Bamvim, and Yendi. Development of draft handbook on customary land administration. The ministry through the Office of Administrator of Two Lands, in collaboration with Kolandev, a non-governmental organization, has developed a draft handbook for documenting customary land rights in Ghana to complement government's efforts at improving customary land administration. It is estimated that about 80% of all lands in the country fall under customary ownership. The development of the handbook is therefore crucial to help resolve the myriad of challenges that plague the customary land administration system. The mining subsector. The benefits of mining to our country, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be overstated. The sector is a key part of Ghana's economy providing jobs for thousands and generating revenue for the government. Notwithstanding these benefits, the negative impacts of mining cannot be ignored. Most prominent of these impacts is the environmental degradation. Government is therefore committed to ensuring that mining is done in a safe and environmentally friendly manner. Permit me to highlight some key achievements as well as strategies being implemented under the sector. Sector Medium Development Plan, SMTDP 2018 to 2021, to address the challenges of the mining subsector. Contribution of mining to Ghana's economy. The sector has so far generated 1.3 billion Ghana cities as government revenue, representing 17% of total government revenue gathered for the year 2019. As collected by the Ghana Revenue Authority, the reflects on these on increase of 30, 39% in the sector's contribution to government revenue relative to the 980 million contributed in 2018. It means we are making very good strides in the mining sector. An amount of 3.3 billion dollars has been generated by the sector in 2019 as export earnings as compared to $3 billion generated over the same period in 2018, making mining a major forest earner in Ghana. In terms of job creation, we have direct and indirect aspects of sale. Most importantly, the mining sector continues to generate employment for the people of Ghana, providing livelihood for thousands across the country. As of June 2019, a total of 26,425 persons are employed or were employed directly and indirectly by the mining sector. 
This is a marked improvement over last year's full year employment figure of 23,894. Indirect employment, under which we have local content in mining. Ghanaian participation in the mining sector has been on the rise. In 2018, local procurement of goods accounted for 87.3%. In dollar-wise, it was 1.4 billion US dollars of total procurement in the mining sector. Whilst not resting these recent achievements, the government in 2018 introduced a new category of services that will be provided solely by Ghanaians from mining communities. As of June 2019, a total of 25 local companies have been registered by the Commission, I mean Minerals Commission, to provide these services. Open up this space is expected to generate more employment and benefits to the local economy. Two, alternative livelihood programs. Whilst not relying solely on industry to generate employment for Ghanaians, the government through mining sector agencies is undertaking alternative livelihood programs within 25 mining communities in eastern, central, and western regions. The aim of the program is to generate economically viable non-mining jobs in mining communities as a way of stemming the menace of illegal mining. So that you find our brothers doing Galamsey, joining them for very good uh, results. And we do away with acts that would destroy the ecology. Let me say that to date, a total of over 5,301 jobs, formal and informal, have been created in mining communities made up of 3,860 males and 1,441 females, representing 73% and 27%, respectively. Our ladies don't like farming, but they, they, they struggle to attain all other positions. Investments in the mining subsector. Ladies and gentlemen, Ghana is in an at attractive mining investment destination in Africa. Over the years, the sector has seen a steady inflow of investment, and in 2018, a total of $953,000 million was pumped into the sector. Most of these investments went into projects such as the Obwasi redevelopment and setting up of engineering and support service companies. Mineral production. In terms of mineral production, annual targets remain achievable. With respect to gold, 2.1 million ounces have been produced by the country as at June 2019. Production of bauxite also remains impressive. As at June 2019, 450,517 tons of bauxite have been produced from the Awaso mines. Let me be quick to add that government has successfully mediated the recent labor unrest that threatened the bauxite mine. Kudos to the president, Nana Kufuado. <laughs> Development of bauxite and iron deposits. Development of aluminum industry. To develop the aluminum industry, through the nation's bauxite deposit, governed through Act, Act, 20, Act 976, 2018, established established Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, GIADEC. The chief executive is sitting right here. He will answer most of the questions and set up a board in March 2019 to see to the management 
of the aluminum resource. GEADEC, since its inception, has focused its attention on the following. Identifying strategic investors to partner GEADEC in the development of the integrated aluminum industry in Ghana. Two, developing a strong license to operate through sustained economic engagement and shared prosperity. Three, establishing and operationalizing the structures required to operate efficiently and effectively in order to, to deliver value to government and other stakeholders. Four, actively managing relationships with existing operations. Achievements of GEADEC since its inception. Ladies and gentlemen, GEADEC has since its establishment embarked on the following. One, selection of strategic investors. GEADEC launched a three-round investor engagement process earlier in the year and received expression of interest from 20 companies looking to invest across the bauxite aluminum value chain. Two, 16 reputable companies from different parts of the world, including Ghanaian firms, were pre-qualified to proceed to round two of the investor engagement rounds. Three, a formal request for proposal was sent out to the successful investors in August 2019. Four, GIADEC held a pre-submission pre -submission investor briefing. Five, responses to the request for proposal are expected in October 2019. Stakeholder engagement. The corporation has engaged various stakeholders in the bauxite aluminum value chain and visited host communities of the bauxite mining areas and other traditional rulers. The corporation, the corporation has also interacted with civil society organizations who have interest in the whole bauxite operation and associated environmental impacts. Ministries, departments, and agencies, including EPA, Minerals Commission and Water Resources and Forestry Commission. Three, confirmation of bauxite resources deposit estimate. An international consulting firm and its Ghanaian counterparts have engaged to confirm the bauxite mineral resources to confirm the bauxite mineral resources estimate in line with JORC, an international standard for measuring mineral resources. Verification drilling phase of the bauxite mineral resources estimate program has commenced in Kibi and Ninahin. Consolidating and digitization of all geological data on bauxite in Ghana has been done. Establishment of a database and data room at the Minerals Commission that holds all bauxite records in Ghana is being put in place. Plans are also advanced to halt exportation of raw bauxite as we pursue an integrated bauxite, alumina, and aluminum industry. Our laws cater for. So very soon, the manganese, the bauxite, and all other uh, related minerals uh, will be dealt with in Ghana. They will not go in their raw state. And therefore, more monies will come under President Kufuado. Ladies and gentlemen, Parliament recently passed the Ghana Iron and Steel Development Corporation Act 2019, Act 988, or the GISTEC Act. This act seeks to develop the iron and steel industry along the value chain. Government is currently putting in place the board of GISTEC. So those who are interested should apply. And same will be forwarded 
to the big house for consideration. This act seeks to develop the iron and steel industry along the value chain government is currently putting in place the board of GISDEC. We are currently putting it in place. It hasn't taken off. Ladies and gentlemen, apart from the iron ore deposits discovered at Shaney in the northern, upon Manso in the western, Pudo in upper west, and Apafu in the Oti regions, manganese is a key mineral mineral that will support the development of the iron and steel industry. Adding value to the precious minerals. The country has in the past been exporting gold without refining. Gold has also been exported with a true value or weight determined outside the country. To address the issue, government through the precious minerals marketing company for the past two years is undertaking a saying to determine the right weight of minerals exported. Similarly, PMMC is establishing a gold refinery to complement the only one in the country managed by a private company. Financial and technical audit of the mining industry to ensure sanity in the mining industry and optimal benefit from mining to the people of Ghana as well as investors, the ministry is mandated by law to safeguard prudent management in the mining subsector. In this regard, government is carrying out technical and financial audit of the operations of the mining industry. Now it is the turn of Cherano Mines. They are being audited. Manganese, we have not completed the job. We are still talking. As I speak, the government is looking into the operations of the sole manganese producer in the country to ensure that the company operates within laid out regulations and also to find out their operational challenges. Unfortunately, the outcome of the audit resulted in a, dis in a disagreement between the operator and government. To resolve the issue, government constituted a committee made up of some senior staff and leaders of workers' union of the firm and that of government. The committee was mandated to look into the issues and advise government accordingly. As I speak, the committee has submitted its report and it is receiving the necessary attention. As a follow-up, the outcome of the technical and financial audit, government is installing way bridges at vantage points along highways between production sites to the harbor. A marine surveyor has been engaged at the Takrade Harbor by the Minerals Commission to ensure recordings of the right tonnage of exported mineral ores health and safety in the mining sector. Health and safety in the mining sector is a priority of the ministry. Working through sector agencies, a total of 905 routine mine inspections have been conducted so far as against 956 conducted over the same period in 2018. Also, about 1,205 industry personnel passed various industry competency certificate examinations in 2019 as against 799 recorded in 2018. This is to ensure that my workforce have adequate knowledge in their field of expertise as required by law. Implementation of an online mining cadastral system. In line with government's aim of improving the ease of doing business in Ghana, the ministry is implementing a paperless online with our minerals rights application system. Phase one, 
that is data re repository, has been completed and piloted in Minerals Commission's District 2. Two offices, two offices at Bolgatanga and Tagwa. Phase two of the project, which involves the total digitization of the licensing procedure is underway and will be completed by December 2019. This platform, once fully operationalized, will allow improved access to information. This, this will enable mining companies, investors, stakeholders, and civil society to assess mineral rights information from any part of the globe. Two, to increase transparency in mineral rights administration and associated revenues. That is recording of all revenues related to the licenses among others. Management of small scale mining. Distinguished audience, with the ban on small scale mining lifted in December, the ministry anticipated an increase in small scale mining activity. The ministry is therefore pursuing pursuing strategies that will ensure that the sector does not experience a relapse of activities that necessitated the ban. Some of the strategies include the following. Stiffer punishment for illegal mining. An amendment to the Minerals and Mining Amendment Act 2015, Act 900, has been made and assented to by His Excellency the President. This amendment seeks to apply stiffer punishment for those who are caught engaging in illegal mining. The amendment increases the minimum fine to 10,000 penalty units and a maximum fine to 15,000 penalty units or a term of imprisonment ranging from 15 years up to 25 years or both a fine and imprisonment. And one penalty unit is 12 cities. So if you multiply by 10,000 penalty units or 15,000, you know how much you, you'll be asked to pay if you are convicted and sentenced accordingly. Ghana ASM formalization project. The Ghana ASM formalization project is due to be launched soon. This is a flagship project of the ministry and in conjunction with other strategies expected to regulate and assist ASM to improve efficiency of their operations. To ensure the use of appropriate, safe and affordable technology in small scale mining to develop alternative livelihood projects in mining communities, to train miners on sustainable mining practices and extraction process, and to ensure stakeholders enforce the law reserving small scale mining for Ghanaians. Community mining program. The ministry is also collaborating with other ministries to successfully implement the community mining program. The program is aimed at giving locals the opportunity to participate in mining in a well-structured way. Improve geology, improve geology for small-scale mining. Ladies and gentlemen, responsible mining practice is a big challenge in the small-scale mining industry as part of measures by government to stop illegal mining and poor mining practices by small-scale miners, the government through, through Ghana Geological Survey Authority and Minerals Commission has delineated a number of areas to be geologically investigated to identify zones of high mineral potential for small-scale mining. This is to enable small-scale miners to mine only at areas with rich mineralized 
zones and reasonable probability of success and stop the bad mining practice of thry and sea, as the guns will say, matramakwe, which has detrimental effects to the environment. Diversification of the mineral economy. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to continue to diversify the mineral economy of the country to attract more investment into the mining subsector, the Ghana Geological Survey Authority, with the, ma with the main, main mission of providing geoscientific data and information for the development of the nation is vigorously conducting geological field investigations across the country. I'm praying that very soon they will do so in my hometown, Jinjini, and they will find gold. Ladies and gentlemen, clear resource is the country, in the country is inadequately utilized for development. As part of the government's agenda of poverty eradication and the one district, one factory initiative, and industrialization. The Ghana Geological Survey Authority for the last two years has identified and evaluated six million metric tons of clay resources at Kwau Fodwa in the Kwau West Municipality of Eastern Region, which is suitable for the production of high quality bricks, tiles, and electrical porcelain. Intensification in limestone exploration activities. The upsurge of cement factories in recent times has led to the high demand for limestone in the country to produce clinker to make production and supply of cement affordable to Ghanaians. In view of this, Government through Geological Survey Authority continues to intensify limestone exploration activities in the Mamprusi West District in order to feed the cement industry. Geological patent by Ghana Geological Survey Authority in the Mamprusi West District has identified large, large limestone deposits in an area of about 15,000 acres suitable for clinker production. Increase exploration efficiency and effectiveness. The exploration companies continue to depend on the government for up-to-date regional geoscience information for effective exploration activities and efficiency, as well as in decision-making in acquisition of mineral concession. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to promote efficiency in mineral exploration in the country and attract more investors into the mining subsector, the government through Ghana Geological Survey Authority has completed regional soil geochemical sampling covering an area of about 180,000 acres in Tumu to aid the enhance and enhance mineral exploration activities in the Upper West region. Mitigation of earthquakes. Recent earthquakes, recent earth tremors are indication that the fault system in Ghana, particularly in Accra, are still active and stress continues to build up on them. The country experienced two F tremors on the 13th of January and 2nd March 2019 with magnitudes 2.8 and 3.9 respectively on the richer scale. These events followed the tremor felt on 24th March and 9th December 2018, both with magnitudes 3.3 on the richer scale. In order to ensure the country is adequately prepared to reduce the risk of any future earthquake or earth tremor, an amount of 2.8 million Ghana cities 
was released in May 2019 by the government to address the challenges with the Ghana Digital, Digital Seismic Network. These include cost of service level agreement, cost of spare parts, cost of sa satellite renewal, cost of establishing solar power systems. To ensure effective land use planning and decision making, geohazard mapping and risk assessment in Accra and around the Aquapem mountain range has been conducted. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now at forestry subsector. I think nobody will ask any question about Rosewood. It is my pleasure to brief you on some achievements within the forestry subsector. Implementation of the National Plantation Development Strategy. The ministry continues to restore the nation's degraded forest landscape. Since 2017, emphasis has been placed on developing forest plantation as one of the presidential priority program of the ministry. This strategy is aimed at achieving sustainable supply of planted forest goods and services to deliver a range of economic, social, and environmental benefits. From 2017 to date, ladies and gentlemen, an estimated area of 20,073 hectares of plantation has been established by government. The Youth in Afforestation, the Youth in Afforestation program has contributed immensely to the government plantation program. Aside of the government plantation established, the private sector has also contributed to the program by establishing an area of 16,060 hectares. From 2017 to July 2019, the government and private sector plantation program have so far generated employment for 83,247 people. Production of natural forest timber and disbursement of royalties to stakeholders. The Forestry Commission continues to monitor the production of natural forest timber across the country for export and domestic use. Statistics indicate that from 2016 to 2018, a total volume of 2.1 million in management, tourism, associated private enterprises. These opportunities arise not only inside the protected areas, but also in their buffer zones and neighboring communities. Ghana has seven national parks within the wildlife protected area. The Moli National Park, the largest wildlife protected area, is one of the favorite ecotourism destinations in Ghana. It also contributes to the conserv conservation and sustainable management of natural resources. From 2016 to 2018, the total number of visitors to ecotourism sites and zoolo zoological gardens recorded was 611,998,000. And revenue generated amounted to 8.9 million Ghana cities. In terms of visitation to ecotourism sites, Mole National Park recorded 51,432 over the period. To boost the ecotourism potential of Mole National Park, it is imperative that the wildlife status is scientifically documented. The last animal census conducted in the park was was in 2006, 
and there is an urgent need to update this information to allow for a review of its management plan and to proceed with an application to UNESCO to consider the park as a World Heritage Site. In order to get the Mole National Park listed as a World Heritage Site, the Forestry Commission, through the European Union delegation in Ghana, undertook a wildlife census to update the number of species of animals in the park at a cost of 130,376 euros, combating illegal activities. Ladies and gentlemen, the second approach of the Commission's law enforcement is the deployment of the 14 rapid response team to forest reserves and wildlife protected areas where illegal activities have been reported. From 2016 to 2018, about 177,801 assorted lumber, 487 chainsaws, 355 dredging machines, 68 locks, 279 vehicles were seized and same have been confiscated to the state. The minister under the law is mandated to appropriate this equipment to any government institution after gazetting. So we we'll leave up to expectation. In addition, an estimated area of 3,277 hectares of illegal farms was destroyed and 774 suspects arrested for forest and wildlife offenses, out of which 293 were successfully prosecuted. In spite of all these efforts of the rapid response teams and the National Task Force, Military and Forestry Commission staff, Illegalities continue across the nation's forest and wildlife protected areas. One, please, for now. Thank you. If there's time, we'll go back. Um, I'd like to start with the issue of boundaries. Uh, boundaries. The minister did mention that the Lands Commission, uh, working, of course, with the Lands Ministry, is working on the Ghana to go boundaries. But um, I would want to ask about what has been done, you know, as far as the other boundaries are concerned. John used that a series called Porous Borders. We realized that um, from what the people told us, and we're dealing, we're talking about boundaries on either sides of, of the country. Um, it is difficult for them to know exactly where, you know, the demarcations are. Uh, they are using very old ways of identifying where the demarcations are, their forefathers put rods somewhere which they cannot find, creating problems with uh, our neighbors. I'd want to know how the ministry is, is tackling this issue generally so that our, our borders can be safe uh, for us. Thank you. Thank you. You did good today. <laughs> good morning, Honorable Minister. Um, I want to find out for the minister whether or not Ghana has won the Galamse war. Uh, because um, the environment is so dear to my heart. I would have loved to ask some questions because we are reserved to one question for now. We'll do that. Because uh, we don't hear of Operation Vanguard and all that. And this is, true, uh, this is a policy that the government embarked on. And in fact, it touched the heart and minds of every Ghanaian. So we want to know the latest or the status of the um, Galamse situation because we need to save our environment. Thank you very much. My name is Timothy Ngim from the Daily Graphic. If I said one question, but mine is just a quick update on uh, some of the initiatives. Here. We are not taking presentation from you. We are taking questions. No, yes, so just a quick, <laughs> a quick maybe time. Your question, on. please. Okay, so I want to find out uh, the technical <coughs> and financial audit that is being done on some mining companies. How many of those companies have been audited so far and how many are left? Then quickly on the timelines for some of the initiatives you mentioned. The Ghana Artisanal Small Scale Mining Program, 
the community mining program. When exactly are you kickstarting this? Then uh, the mine guards, we know that the Minerals Commission trained some 220 mine guards and uh, appointed them, gave them appointment letters around April there about. I want to find out if they have been deployed and if not yet, why haven't they been deployed yet? Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Samuel Adoba, TV Africa. Mr. Minister, I would like to ask my question in Chile from TV Africa. If I say me, I say, Minister Nekasano, or can we be war? I can say, ecotourism. Now, if I say me, I say, Achimata Forest, a previous government, and also, I can say, ecotourism. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, me freaking no me fe. Um, ona wo me ba cho me be question ni e o Rosewood in sense mon kakra. E nya ni se forestry commission ka se Rosewood bia e be on be chi bia na on me she no. Te be se hwe ministry no se mo so so de na mo adwen fa ho. Ni nya ni te so se Rosewood importation eh sorry exportation so so no. Ghana is likely say be face ban in the world market and so so so. And so it is saying and I and Dr. Apak on Rosewood now, on the social chair, say, you won't say, in Brad, be brave, hold my brass and my ink, ink, but I'm not focusing it. So, did he say, committee, I must set up and composition because in Brandon Crown, I'm not focusing on a committee, this is my dear, because he's saying, that's it. Yeah, thank you. My name is Arthur Mesa from Ghana News Agency. Honorable, uh, when the Minister of Formation came to introduce the issues, he mentioned National Cathedral. I, I, I did not hear anything about it, if you, you update us on it. Then the issue of Rosewood. Uh, there has been some seizure at the port, and we also heard about Helena Juan issue. Please, can you update us on what has happened to the seized Rosewood? And that the, question was just asked. Which one? The, uh, the update on what happens to the seas rose through. So just uh -huh. save us time by okay. going on to each other, the other question. Okay, so have. you answered the cathedral one. Then the employment of over 24,000 in the mining sector, if you can break it down, how many are in the large scale mining, how many are in the small scale mining sector, and then the areas that were, they were employed, if you can give us details. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, thank you very much. My name is Joshua Nanakwami Aira. I'm with um, GH1 TV. Uh, Honorable Minister, I have a question. I'm sure the Rosewood question has already been exhausted, but um, my question will be on Galamse. Um, quite recently, I, had, or I did a documentary from uh, Modaso, a community in Dintra. Uh, upper East, East Dentra, and the young folks there, the youth, uh, particularly beyond or below 17 years, are engaged in Galamse, uh, vigorously engaged in Galamse. They've abandoned their homes, families, and school, and parents are allowing them to do so because they believe that most of their farms have been taken away from them, and they don't really have enough uh, resources to take care of them and so making employment quite difficult for them. I just want to understand what is the status now on Galamse and particularly having the youth being part of it and girls even with children being part of it and just a clarification if there was a recent report that uh, some rules would um, seized were going to be banned. We just want a clarification if it is true. Another repetition. Let me start from Accra before I end up at Takwa and Pristia. With respect to the National Cathedral, the land is ready for construction to take effect. Those of us who care after here, you may walk through and you see that 
Most of the structures over there have been demolished. The debris are being carried away from that particular site. So we'll soon start the construction at that end. <clears throat> Seized rosewood. The ministry is not aware. When I say the ministry, I mean the ministry proper, the Forestry Commission in this circumstance, is not aware of the statement that rosewood seized will be bent. And indeed, the seized rosewood will not be bent. We will use it for a different purpose instead of burning it. Employment in the mining sector. For now, if we are talking of employment in the mining sector, we are dealing largely with the large scale and not the small scale. From the speech delivered, I alluded to the fact that we have employed so much, and that is with particular reference to the large scale companies. Data on the small scale companies will be assessed later and same will be made known to you. Status of the Galamsey as to whether we have been successful or otherwise total eradication or not. The answer is that we have achieved about 85% success. There are a handful of people around who are still bent on doing galamsi. And such difficult persons, such adamant ones, are the ones that the law now caters for in terms of punishment regime. If we are totally successful, there wouldn't have been the need to amend the laws at all. We have amended the law to make it unattractive for people to do illegal mining. Yes. <clears throat> Now, on Boundaries Commission, the boundary between Ghana and Togo was well established and delineated way back 1929. And that was by a pillar and not by a metal pool, by a pillar, a concrete pillar, which is still there. Now, the boundaries that we are talking of we are tracing same from land to the sea. And on or in the sea is where the problem is. The Togolese think that they can come into our waters and claim ownership of sea and seek to put the boundaries at a different end. But tracing it properly from where the pillar is since 29, 1929, which both sides have observed, none had ever trespassed. It is only this time that the Togolese are seeking to trespass. Recently, there was a meeting to that effect in Ghana here where they came. We sat down with them. We could not conclude on that. We are still talking. If it fails, of which I'm not praying for, then we may go before the international court as we did with the, our brothers at Cote d'Ivoire. And we know that we are going to be very successful because history in this circumstance cannot be rocked.
again dealing with technical and financial auditing. The Ghana Manganese Company has gone through this process and a committee was also taxed, made up of both sides, government side and that of the Ghana Manganese to review the findings of ISH, which I believe has been done and the document is yet to be documented in whole for same to be put before the minister and other stakeholders to go through it. Mine guards, 220 mine guards indeed were trained and they have been deployed to various eight towns and villages where mining activities is being carried out. We are yet to add up the number to 500 plus or to 600. Uh, there were hitches, but they've been cleared now. I will believe shortly we'll train that number in addition to half about 600. Ecotourism in respect of Achimota Forest is being dealt with. In fact, part of the land belongs to Achimota School, of which the school has taken over, and there are other interests being considered. There is a judgment on a percentage of that land which is uh, also being considered for the original owners to take that particular percentage. All this is being dealt with. Then Rosewood, Rosewood versus my brother, Dr. Park. The committee is going to be very successful in its deliberation, I believe. Dr. Apart is the MP for Bonsa South, and it is his constituency that was recently alleged hosting about 20 articulated trucks of rosewood. And at the day that the ban was put on harvesting, transporting, and exporting of rosewood, I did indicate that it behoves all Ghanaians, all stakeholders, chiefs and politicians to assist in this direction, bringing this canker to its whole. And Dr. Park is one of the eminent politicians in the country, representing a particular constituency, the Bulsa South where it was alleged, or it is being alleged, that most of the rosewood is coming from. So we need his assistance. He should help us to halt the harvest, harvesting and uh, uh, transporting and exportation of rosewood. <clears throat> My friend from Delhi Search Light, I think your, your question has been answered as to whether the Lamsi battle has been won or not. If you write an exam and you get 85%, that is excellent. That is an A. And for that matter, you, are, you can compare yourself to any other person that sat to write the paper. Um, I must admit, that there are some miscreants on the ground who seek to go out to malign the ministry, the Forestry Commission, and the Minerals Commission with fake documents purporting to have gotten them from us, and they do illegal mining. I must also admit that there are some security officers who have been taken onto the ground to assist us in combating this canker. 
but he end up doing otherwise. I must also admit that there are some <coughs> landlords, some chiefs, who are complicit in this particular uh, canker, and therefore making it very difficult for us to have 100% eradication. We are still battling. Those of us who think that they can go back to the field to work in this circumstance illegally, the law is around, and when the law gets you, you'll be dealt with. Thank you. Um, Stacy for the Washington Post. So I wanted to hear an update on the Etiwa Forest mining, um, in particular, if any of this opposition that's been like from international and local bodies is having any effect on plans for mining. Thanks. Uh, my name is Mamie Jiwa from the Independence. Um, I'm happy about the progress made on the war against um, Galamse. I come from the Tiwa area, Atiwa West, and my area we still have issues with um, reclamation. And then, as at now I'm talking, Atiwa Renare, they are my, my, my grandmother there. They are facing challenges with portable water because of restoration of the stream, the main stream that they were using. It's called a, a Abresu. So what is going to be done about it and then the reclamation issue? Thank you. What's again, no problem, sir? Um, there's a complaint by Forestry Commission that the forestry guards uh, are not too many to tackle the illegal uh, lamp in the system. Uh, what efforts are you making uh, as it were to tackle that issue? Because uh, they were supposed to be armed. I don't know whether you're going to do that for them. If not, how are you going to make sure that they get a lot of forestry guards to arrest the situation? And in respect to reclamation that I alluded to, Recently, there was a news item where a few, I don't know whether they are supposed to be minus or what, fell into a pit and they were all died. And there was a plan by the government to do proper reclamation and then uh, fill all the uh, pits in the country. What has gone on so far with that situation? Thank you very much. Okay. Let me, uh, Timothy, again. Uh, one of my questions was answered. It had to do with the timelines for the implementation of the community mining project and the Ghana Artisanal Small Scale Mining Program too. Then quickly, since we are dealing with the mining sector, there is a lot of encroachment in the quarry sector. What is the, uh, this, the ministry doing to keep the situation? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Minister. Yeah. Um, it's a follow-up to the uh, issue of uh, burning of seized uh, rosewood. The issue of burning seized rosewood came from the chief executive officer of the Forestry uh, Commission. And you, the sector minister, also telling us that we won't burn the... Um... <laughs> so I, I am... I, at a loss as to what consultation went on and why the contradiction. So, you know, who, whose um, response should we take, uh, the boss? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, on the Rosewood, my question is, last week the minister was on a tour at Tema, and uh, the deputy minister, beg your pardon, uh, Honorable Benito, and he did the EIA to come out with their um, evidence, if they have one, as far as the claims they've made on the uh, government and you know all officials they claim are involved in the smuggling of rose root. Um, I, I find that a little curious and I want to ask, will the committee headed by the Deputy Minister invite the EIA at all? Uh, will they be part of this investigative uh, you know, work? Because if they will, I don't know why he went ahead to make those comments, if indeed they will be invited to present evidence as part of the work they're doing. And then my question on the borders was not quite answered. Um, we have a security issue at hand, which is Sabridge now. And uh, the issue about Togo, Ghana border, that is fine, it's been cleared with. But there's a general issue of our borders on, on either side. And I want to know, find out clearly, what's the Lands Ministry probably with the Lands Commission 
uh, in collaboration with the other security agencies, are doing to make sure that there's a proper, a clear demarcation of our boundaries. Thank you. Two questions with reference to Atiwa Forest. The answer is this. Atiwa Forest, we know that <coughs> in Greater Accra here, that is where all water that we drink take its source from. And in that direction, it's gives water to Kibi Achim area and all that. We have done some pilots work to the extent that the forest at Atiwa will not be destroyed in terms of mining. We have done some exercise to the effect that who sustain the forest at Atiwa. The water bodies at Atiwa will not be destroyed. The, there are some experts that have been trained in Australia to come down here to assist us do the mining at Atiwa Forest without throwing out the trees without destroying the ecology, without destroying the water bodies. That is why we insist on doing mining at that area. Of course, there is that passion that you had lived at Atiwa for long, and you have seen mining activities at other areas where the land has been devastated. And to that effect, if you should raise this issue of devastation, you are not wrong. But because you don't know that we are coming with sustainable system where the trees, the river bodies, and all other natural events at that particular area, catchment area, at what, so to say, will be maintained. This is how you have to go. So my dear lady that spoke about Abresu Nsu, the, <clears throat> the effort is to the point that we will maintain all this ecology for you. And we will do the mining for the entire nation to benefit. Then my friend that said his question was not answered, timelines for implementing the MMIP. MMIP is slated to be launched on the 17th. Ceteris Parabus, slated to be launched on the 17th at University of Ghana Great Hall. So after the launch, we move straight away to deal with. We have so far been given some assistance from the World Bank to set up an office, which has been done. And we are waiting for a package again from them to go to the field after we have gone through PPA structures to award contracts to companies, individuals, to reclaim the land. Uh, my senior, Sir John, the CEO of Forestry Commission, I did not hear him. If he said so, if he said so, then probably it was a mere path.
because he did not intend that statement to be effected. There cannot be anything that could be done at any of the commissions where the minister will stand at the right and then the commission will stand at the left. We work in tandem. So it is not that he had said one thing and I've said another thing. And to that effect, we are being <laughs> inconsistent. My brother that spoke about the boundaries. Your contention is that you now agree in respect of the uh, 1929 boundary with Togo. You are talking again of other boundaries. Boundary Commission is a statutory body that ought to be established. We are still in the process of establishing this Boundary Commission. There is a small problem that we need to clear, after which the Commission will be formally inaugurated to carry out its activities. As we speak now, it is being done by a body that has been constituted of which the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources is part of. And we are discharging the responsibility as required. The body, the nominations thereof, has been put before the office of the Chief of Staff at the Jubilee House, and same has been forwarded to the Council of State to satisfy all constitutional requirements. From there, it will have to come to the office of the president. He gives his blessings to it, and then we'll move on from that end. So all other issues relating to boundaries that have been not been clearly dealt with will be dealt with. But as of now, what is pending is this Togo-Ghana boundary. Honorable Deputy Minister, I believe I have answered all the questions. Uh -huh. What's yours? Forestry guards. Reclamation of mining areas. Yes, reclamation in general is a particular outfit that comes under the functions of MMIP. Yes, and it is that that I answered by saying that some part of the package has come for the office to be set up. The office has been set up. We are looking for the launching in general, after which we assess our package from the World Bank. It is a World Bank funded project. Indeed, a pilot of that particular exercise was done at Chebi. And the, the commission, the ministry found that as aspect to be very successful. And as soon as we get the assistance from World Bank, um, we'll move straight away to other mining areas, including the area you spoke of, to reclaim the soil by filling up all that uh, holes and then make sure that at the end of the day we plant trees on such lands. Is that all? Forestry guards. Forestry guards, we have the forestry guards. Um, you know, before one can use any ammunition in the country or any implement relating to ammunition, you have to seek clearance from the Ministry of Interior. So that is where we have gotten to, and the kind of ammunition that we want them to use. Uh, we need to seek all that clearance. And indeed, it will first have to go through the process of coming before cabinet, and if cabinet gives its approval, then we may go further to indicate the sort of ammunition that will have to be used. And National Security Council will also have to come in 
we cannot go for AK-47 and come and give to forestry guards who will be behaving as soldiers the next day they turn the whole country down. It is, it is a very serious matter when you get ammunition and you pass one on to third parties. So we are still talking in that respect. It is not only uh, pieces of wood that will have to be guarded at the forest. We will have to protect our wildlife as well. So uh, we will not have forest officers who will use the guns to shoot the animals over there for their own food. Thank you. <laughs>